It's not quite officially winter yet, but ski season is definitely well underway. The Maine Ski and Snowboard Museum is taking advantage of the season and hosting a series of presentations called the Coco Chronicles. 217's Beth McAvoy sat down with the president and historian. We have uh, a lot of wonderful stories about skiing and snowboarding here in Maine, and we wanted to take the stories to the around the state. Glenn Parkinson loves skiing. These are from 1900. They're eight feet long. It's very skiable. He loves it so much he's dedicated years to studying its history. This is ski spree. This wax was made in Westbrook, Maine. Oh, these are to be used in the backyard. Uh, these, you wouldn't take these to a ski slope. And specifically the rich impact Maine has had in developing the sport. The very first book on skiing to be published in North America was The Winter Sport of Skiing, published here in, in Portland in 1905. Theo Johnson was a boat builder, but he fell in love with skiing, and so he converted his boat company to a ski company. And uh, he made beautiful, beautiful handmade skis. But in 1905, not many people skied, so he wrote a book to teach people what the sport was all about. By the 1920s, skiing was growing in popularity. In the 1920s, there were a lot of big winter carnivals. Portland, uh, Bangor, Lewiston, the cities had spectacular winter carnivals. They were multi-day parties, basically, all built around skiing. In Portland, one of the big events was the ski jump, and there were 5,000 people that showed up uh, down on St. John Street to watch the ski jumpers. In Glenn's basement is a treasure trove, his personal collection of antique skis and ski paraphernalia. This is an early Bass ski boot. Bass was one of the first companies in Maine that promoted skiing nationally. In the 1920s, they produced one of the first true ski boots. And Bunny Bass was a young man at the time, but he, he loved skiing and he really put a lot of the effort of the company behind it. This particular boot is from the 1930s. And you see this instep strap here. It held the, the foot down into the, into the boot so you had more control. Bunny developed that instep strap and this was, this was one of his pride and joys was the development of this boot. One of the best of, of its time in the 1930s. Skiing struggled, but didn't go under during the Great Depression. It was at that time that a group of businessmen in Freiburg built the state's first rope tow. I spoke with Avon Hilton, who was one of the skiers that was invited to ski there. He said that there were about 100 or maybe 200 skiers that showed up, and about 3,000 spectators came to watch the skiers. Skiing was very popular, but it was really a spectator event in the early 30s. Um, but that quickly changed. As popularity in the sport grew, so too did the equipment. From these 100-year-old skis... This is just a, a scrap piece of wood. You can still, still see the marks from the saw on it. Two tubs uh, produced equipment that was taken on, on North Pole expeditions. It was taken on South Pole expeditions. Paris Manufacturing was one of the biggest ski companies in the country. Uh, they produced skis and then shipped them all over the country, full page ads in the national publications. Uh, they were one of the biggest uh, ski companies around. Of course, L.L. Bean got in on the action. This is L.L. Uh, Bean ski and boot from the 1930s. Many may be surprised that Maine's rich history of equipment manufacturing continues today. Phil and Amy at Amalgam Skis make beautiful handmade skis right here in Freeport. And uh, Winter Stick it, uh, manufactures up at Sugarloaf. And that's one of the earliest ski uh, snowboard companies. Do you think that most Mainers realize how rich the state is in history of, of skiing? No, I don't. So what our mission is, is to share these stories of, about the richness of Maine's skiing history and snowboarding history.